Hey Southeast, this is Dan Preston from Career Services. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about job and internship searching. So let me share my screen with you and then we'll get started. Job and internship search strategies are varied and so there's going to be a lot of personality that you're going to have to put into this, a lot of internet searching that you're going to have to put into this. So I want to make sure that you're just taking the right approach and that you're really taking this seriously. First, I want to go through the facts. 80% of percent of positions are not advertised. Uh, that's a real big thing because you have to realize that you can't just go to the internet and find an internship. You need to talk to people. You need to network. You really need to try and take some time to look for jobs and internships. 98% of US employers have fewer than 100 employees. That's kind of tough to wrap your brain around because you think about it, and we think of those big name brands all the time. We think of the Teslas, we think of Apple, we think of Nike. And it's not always the easiest to think of the smaller companies, companies with fewer than 100 employees, but that makes up the vast majority of all the internship and job opportunities will be with those smaller firms because they are 98% of the job market. The average American with a bachelor's degree is going to have between 11 to 14 jobs by the time they turn 38. It's pretty wild to think about that, but if you add in your internships, your part-time employment, and then also those entry-level positions that you might not stay in for a long period of time, that does add up. And so 11 to 14 jobs is going to be the average. About 60% of graduates spend less than five hours a week on their job search. This is a huge problem because you need to spend more time searching for a job, especially whenever you're in your senior year of college or whenever you're looking for an internship. So make sure that you take the time and make sure that you really work on your job and internship search. The average amount of time it takes to land a job is seven to eight months. So start looking early, start planning early, don't put it off until the last minute. The recruitment funnel is a big thing. Because 1,000 people will view a job, 200 will actually start the application, 100 are going to finish the application, so on and so forth. And so you'll just keep working your way through this funnel. 75 resumes are going to get screened out of that initial 100, and 25 resumes will actually be seen by a hiring manager. Four to six people will go in for an interview, and one to three people will be offered a second interview. And then, ultimately, that one person is going to be offered a job. I like to think of this more of a weed out process instead of a hiring process, because there's a thousand people that look for that job. Only 200 people actually start the application, and of those 200, only 100 people actually finish the application. Then, out of those 100, 75 people didn't do it correctly, and they're gonna get weeded out of the application process. Then, when you get to the hiring manager, your resume is going to be reviewed for bad mistakes and spelling errors. And that's also when your social media gets viewed. And so that's gonna cut more people out of the hiring process. And then in addition to that, four to six people will go in for an interview. Of those four to six people, who has bad breath, who has bad clothes, who has nervous tics where they, they pick their cuticles or tap their feet during their interview. And then finally, that one to three people that come in for a second round interview, they're gonna see if it's a cultural fit, if they have the polish, if they have the ability to do the job. So there are three moves of the job search that I want you to think about. First, select your targets. Think about your interests, think about your skills, your values, your goals, the geography that you wanna work in, uh, the, the actual location, the cities. So really work to define your interests, work with a professional, work with a faculty member to figure out what it is that you like what you're interested in and what you want to pursue. Research target companies. There are lots of companies out there that you've never even heard of. So talk to people, ask questions, scope things out, look at company websites, check out career fairs, uh, community organizations and professional publications, uh, journals, social media. Look for these organizations because there's lots and lots of companies out there that you're not even thinking of whenever it comes to what it is that you want to do. And then make contact with these companies. Go to career events, connect with alumni from Southeast, identify potential positions with these organizations, and if you do find an opportunity, apply for that opportunity, and then follow up accordingly. So make sure that you really find those targeted companies, work towards those targeted goals, and research, and, and get a plan. 
So a couple of useful tips whenever it comes to this job search. Create a master list of large scale organizations that you're really interested in working for. About five to 10 targeted companies that you want to really work towards getting an internship or a job with. Additionally, create another list of reserve companies, companies that would be considered your second tier, those next group of organizations that you're not super excited about, but you're not going to turn down an offer from. Log any of your submitted applications and create yourself a guide that will allow you to understand who you've applied for, what you've applied for, when you applied for it, because you will be applying for a lot of jobs, and that's going to be something, if you have a guide, you can revert back to, you can look at, you can understand who it is that you applied to and what position you applied to. Internships just aren't about coffee and copies anymore. Landing an internship is like landing a job, so you need to make sure that you network Talk to students, talk to alums, talk to faculty members, talk to staff. We all have connections that can help you. Create your and brand yourself. You wanna make sure that you're branding yourself and you're representing yourself in a professional manner. So on your social media, make sure that you're representing yourself as if you are your own professional brand. If you're on LinkedIn, you really wanna make sure that you're representing yourself in a professional way. Consider internships that are credit versus not credit. A lot of students are doing not for credit internships. If you do decide to do an internship for course credit, if it's part of your degree program, if it's offered as part of your program, make sure you've completed the proper paperwork to get that for credit course. Check online resources like Red Hawk Jobs. We'll talk about all these online resources coming up and there's a lot of resources for you to search for internships and find those. But you wanna be proactive, you wanna be flexible and you wanna be open to opportunities. There are a lot of organizations in this world, and you might not have ever thought of yourself as working for an, a nonprofit organization. Well, and there might be a great internship for you in a nonprofit organization. So you wanna make sure that you're staying flexible and you're being proactive and you're looking at all of your opportunities. So how does an internship offer differ from a full-time job? Internships are time limited. They're gonna be about 150 hours maximum. So you wanna make sure that you've got them in a defined amount of time. That could be a semester, it could be a summer, it could be the end of one semester into the summer depending on the employer. So it's pretty flexible, but you wanna have it in a defined period of time. An internship is really revolving around an educational experience and a mentorship that you want to work with an organization or with an employer who's going to teach you about their business, about their industry, about their company. So really, you want to look for that good mentor-mentee type of a relationship. And ideally, this internship is going to involve a partnership with the university, with the employer, and with the student. If you're going for a four-credit internship, all of these organizations have to sign off on it because you're getting course credit, the employer is getting work, and the university is getting you off campus and into an employment opportunity where you're building a skill set. So it's definitely a good thing to consider. Internships are the new entry level jobs. About 68.9% of seniors have done an internship in their education. 58.9% of students have completed one by the end of their sophomore year. I know that sounds crazy, but 97.6% uh, of interns recommend doing an internship. So almost 100% of people that have done an internship really see them as valuable. So you wanna make sure you take it seriously, you find opportunities, and you use this as a way to build your resume towards your ultimate career goals. The benefits of an internship, you get to build that resume. You get to build that experience while you're still a student. One of the greatest things you can learn, learn in an internship is what you don't want to do. A lot of times you might go into an internship in sales and realize you don't want to do sales. So there's going to be a lot of flexibility in what you learn. You might learn that you love it, you might learn that you don't, but that allows you to move forward winnow down your job search, and really target for what you're looking for in the future. Additionally, an internship, either way, you get to build a professional network. You also get to be considered an internal applicant for any employment opportunities that might come up for that organization. And then lastly, one of the best things about an internship is that you get paid. So you will get paid about $9 to $20 an hour while you're in school. I've even seen some internships for graduate students go up closer to $25 an hour. It's pretty remarkable. So you wanna make sure that you're constantly just thinking about the positives and the benefits of this type of employment opportunity. Okay, so how do you get there? 
how do you build a network? How do you do this job search thing? The first thing, think about your family. Who in your family can be a reliable resource for you to start building your network? Is it your uncle who works for the ad agency that you've always thought was cool? Do you have a second cousin that works for the Cardinals? Think about your family. Think about your friends. Think about your mentors and your faculty members. Think about the Office of Career Services and how we can help you connect with alumni and all of these other great resources that a university the size of SEMO has. Uh, think about your previous supervisors. So you wanna make sure that you're thinking about who you can contact by building a network. One of the good resources to build a network is LinkedIn. If you've ever been to a conference, if you've ever had any sort of interaction with an alumnus through a fraternity or sorority, add those people to your LinkedIn profile so that you constantly are building your network during your college career. So where do you search? Where do you look for these opportunities? I recommend looking on LinkedIn. There's a great job searching engine on LinkedIn and it allows you to see the person who posts the position. So there's recruiters on LinkedIn who are looking for soon to be college graduates. Also, you can look on Facebook. You can use websites like redhawkjobs.com. Red Hawk Jobs is actually run by the Office of Career Services. The companies that post positions on there are companies that routinely come to campus and connect with our office so that we can help them connect with good, solid employees. Now, down at the bottom of this page, you'll see Indeed.com. Indeed is a massive, massive company. It's a huge algorithm that scrapes the web, the interweb, <laughs> scrapes the website, the, the internet for all kinds of jobs. And so you want to make sure that if you're using Indeed, double check to make sure the position is still a viable position. Go to the company website, look in their career section to make sure that your position that you found on Indeed is still viable. You're going to see in the bottom right corner of this, there's the Ad Club STL. Think about the professional organizations that are out there around what it is that you want to do. If you want to work for an advertising agency, consider something like the Ad Club STL. They will have a website part of their website, actually, that's dedicated to career services. So think about Ad Club STL. Look at all the different organizations that maybe you're part of a professional organization for construction management or for accounting or any of those areas, uh, human resources. Those all have professional organizations. Those professional organizations will have job searching portions of their websites. So think large. LinkedIn is huge. Think about that. Indeed is huge. Look at those large scale organizations, but then also think small and specialty. Red Hawk Jobs, Ad Club STL, the Pro Golfers Association actually has a career services section of their website. So really think outside of the box, look in all corners of the internet to find those positions. About 80% of the jobs are not listed. So you have to think of it as an iceberg. There's a small amount of jobs that are listed out there on the internet, and then there's a whole chunk of unadvertised jobs. So why does an employer hide a job? Sometimes it's cheaper. It might cost an employer to post a position. They might be looking for internal applicants or referred applicants. Uh, in confidentiality, a lot of times, the person who they will be replacing might not know they're being replaced. And so you just have to think there's a lot of reasons why an employer might not post a position. And how do you as a student leverage this hidden job market? You need to dig deep. Dig deep into your connections. Dig deep into the internet. Go to those company websites. Go to those professional organizations. If you have a conference coming up, bring copies of your resume so that you can connect with people right then and there. Uh, don't keep your job search a secret. Put it in your LinkedIn summary that you're looking for employment opportunities in a certain area or a certain industry. So hidden jobs plus a dedicated search equals a better suited opportunity for you. So that's the biggest thing that you got to remember. The basics are very, very basic. A good resume plus a je good job search equals an interview. Good interview skills plus knowing what you bring to the table equals a job and internship offer. So a resume, interview, job, all kind of falls into the same line. So let's say you've done your job search well and you have an interview. The first thing I want you to think about, research the employer. Make sure you know about the employer. Make sure that before you go, you're confident, you've read articles about them, you understand what they do and what this position that you're interviewing for does. 
So you want to make sure that you're constantly thinking about how you can benefit the employer. Also, prepare a professional wardrobe. You don't want to show up to your interview not looking professional. So make sure that you've got your shirts dry clean, your suit fits, X, Y, and Z. Practice your interview skills. Have somebody ask you questions. Think about how you'd introduce yourself. We might think it's very simple, but that first question of an interview is actually really hard. The classical first question of an interview is, tell me about yourself and why you're interested in this position. You need to be able to confidently answer that in order to be considered for the next phase of the interview process. Understand why you're a good candidate for this job. Think about what you bring to the table, what makes you unique, so that you can actually bring something to this position that's different and good for the company. And you really have to know how to sell yourself and your skills, because really, you're representing yourself. You are the product. You are marketing a product. And so you really want to make sure that you can sell yourself, speak highly of yourself and your abilities, and really show that employer why you are relevant to them. And you know, understand what the employer needs. If they need a tax accountant and you are a tax accountant, talk about those skills. You want to make sure that you're matching the requirements of what they're looking for. And you can do that through understanding what the position is, understanding what the employer is. During your interview, feel free to show your personality. You do not have to cover up who you are. You just want to make sure that you keep any sort of little nervous ticks in check but show your personality. Be bubbly, be fun, be smiley. Enjoy the process that is an interview. Enjoy talking about yourself and your skills because you are unique and you have great things to bring to the table. So you wanna make sure that you, you bring it all and you bring your personality and you take it all into the interview. You ultimately get to decide if the employer is a fit for you. So you do not have to take the position if they offer it. You get to decide if the employer's product, if the employer's culture, if everything that the employer brings to the table is a fit for you. The same way they get to decide if you're a fit for the position. So you've got to always remember that. So think about it. You do not have to actually accept an opportunity that you have been offered. And so that's something just to always consider as part of an internship. So decide if the job or the employer is a good fit for you personally. And make sure at the end of the interview, once everything is all said and done, to send a thank you card. It's a very simple way to put your name back in front of the employer after they've concluded all of their interviews. So think about the entire interview process. Think about how you're going to represent yourself and whether or not you get to represent yourself professionally in front of the organization for which you're applying for a job or an internship. Make sure if you do not get offered the job, don't burn the bridge. You wanna make sure that if, you, if, it, if it's not a good fit for them, if it's not a good fit for you, don't burn the bridge. Just move on, find the next position, go to the next interview, and make sure you start thinking about your next step. Don't get bogged down in the not getting hired by the company that you just interviewed for. And please, send an interview within 48 hours of the conclusion of your interview. Send a thank you card within 48 hours of the conclusion of your interview. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to Career Services. We will help you with your job search. We will help you with your resume and cover letter writing. We'll help you with your interview prep. We are here to make sure that you're successful. So email us at careerservices at cmo.edu. Visit our website, which is cmo.edu forward slash career services, or submit your resume for revision and review at cmo.edu slash resume rescue. This has been a fun time. Thank you very much, you guys. Have a good rest of your day.